Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. This is it, this is the final replay roundup, the tier 9 to 10 category of my 100,000 subscriber replay contest. Once again, I'm starting you off with um, a replay that while it wasn't going to get in the top 3 damage done, was still an immensely entertaining game to watch. And I'm showing you this one from RZ89 in his Object 263. We'll just take a moment there to commiserate with the unfortunate Geschutzwagen Tiger artillery driver who apparently doesn't like playing on this map. Ensk. Oh dear, what a shame. Is there no river for you to drown yourself in out of sheer spite when you start losing? So sad. Anyway, moving on. Object 263s. You just never see them anymore. And I'm not entirely sure why, because I can remember when these things were coming out on the test server and everybody was complaining that they were going to be the new flavour of the month overpowered tank. And for a while you did see a few of them, but then they just sort of, they seemed to go out of fashion. And I'm not entirely sure why, because they are pretty good machines. They're essentially just tank destroyer versions of the Object 261 artillery. 595 damage, and I think this is the reason why you don't see very many of them. Second shot. 603 damage. It's because they've got the lowest alpha damage of any of the tier 10 tank destroyers. But they do have the highest rate of fire. This thing fires a shot roughly once every 10 seconds. So it's the complete opposite, if you like, of most of the other tier 10 tank destroyers. It's a low profile target, it's very quick, the gun is accurate, the frontal armour is ridiculously troll, but it's an open-topped vehicle, so high explosive shots tend to absolutely wreck it. Artillery loves shooting at these things, and the sides are made out of ammo racks. So it's not without its weaknesses, but its DPM is just ridiculous. Oh, he sees that 131 coming, he stops, he aims, he waits patiently, he pounces. <laughs> There's his first kill. He's already done 1700 damage. That's the thing with this tank, it's not about the alpha damage. It's totally unlike all of the other tier 10 TDs. But it's got great penetration, very fast rate of fire, and it's very accurate. And that damage really, really starts to add up. 3008 damage done. Oh, there's an unlucky bounce off the IS-7, but the M103 very kindly rolls forward and takes the next couple of hits for us. <laughs> Which allows us to finish off the IS-7. And then start giving this T-34 driver a very, very bad day. It kind of feels like driving a Jag Tiger. It, it's the same sort of great frontal armour, super accurate, rapid firing, high penetration gun. Let's go and search for some more victims, shall we? 4,210 damage done. And if you've ever seen a replay of an Object 261 artillery going into tank destroyer mode and just charging around city streets, that's kind of what this thing's like. Oh, he set the IS-3 on fire. Go on, burn. Yep, he's killed him. And now he's got himself behind an IS-7. And the IS-7 appears to have only just noticed. Angles his armour, bounces from his 250mm frontal lower hull, IS-7's oh, doomed. And we're just going to finish him off. Kill number four. IC-152 with the BR-10. <laughs> Didn't know whether to shit or go blind. <laughs> four tanks on him. I think he just gave up. Okay, that Conqueror is in trouble. Serious, serious trouble. We're probably not going to be able to save him from the T-62A. But we can at least make the T-62A sorry he was ever born. IS-7 finishes him off. 
Took a shot on the flank. T69 there. Uh, this is bad. Flank tanks on both sides. The 4502A behind him. Good. Flank secure. Turn this tank around. Point the front of that ISA. Another 683 damage. It's even Stevens. 11 tanks killed on both sides. KV4 there. 566 damage. Here comes a full health IS-7. KV-4 must be thinking, screw my life. <laughs> He's just not letting him go. IS-7 drives up onto his flank, derps him in the side, and that was just ridiculously unlucky. The KV-4 actually bounced that shot, so IS-7 tries to ram him to death. Yeah, the KV-4's double your weight. Reloads, finishes him. ISA nose to nose with an object 263. <laughs> Hello, Mr. IS8. You appear to have run out of friends. Goes for the engine shot, doesn't quite. Oh, actually manages to penetrate him. Well, there you go. Trying to angle his armour. No chance. And there's an object 704. Which way is his gun facing? With 1300 health remaining, it really doesn't matter which way his gun's facing. Turns out it was the wrong way. So there's our top gun. And 11,088 damage done. And there's his battle results screen. And what's interesting here is that not only did he get top gun, he got confederate as well. <laughs> What a, look at the amount of credits here, 122,000, 4,600 XP, there's his mastery badge, so best game he's ever had in the Object 263, Top Gun Confederate and Sniper, 23 shots fired, 23 hits, 22 penetrations, enemies damaged, 12, there were only 3 tanks on the enemy team he didn't put a shot into, <laughs> and he killed 6 of them, wow, wow, just, yeah, nowhere near I mean, how much damage did he do in total? Was it 11,000? Yeah, 11,088. Nearly 12,000... Um, no, not nearly 12,000. <laughs> nearly 11,100. Um, not even close. Not, not even close to doing the most damage in this category. But just one of those games that was just exciting to watch. An, an exceptionally well-played game uh, in a machine that you hardly ever see. So that's why I'm very happy to be able to show you RZ89's game in the Object 263 on ENSC. Now, moving on. I suppose the chances of not seeing the Death Star in this section of the replay roundup were probably nil. A lot of people sent replays in of this thing. This is Novarore in his FV215B183, the Death Star. And in almost all of those replays, everybody did more than 10,000 damage. That's just what this thing does. Now, the machine itself isn't that good. The gun isn't that good. It's not particularly fast. It's not particularly well armoured. It's not particularly stealthy. The gun has a 3.4 second aiming time. It's a horrific aiming time. The accuracy is bad. It only carries 12 rounds of ammunition and it only fires two shots a minute. With various different equipment and crew skill options, you can get that reload down to about one shot every 25 seconds, but that's more or less the best you're ever going to get. But it's not the gun, it's not the machine, it's the ammunition that it fires. Now, even with standard armor-piercing ammo, this thing has 310 millimeters of penetration, and it does 1150 average damage. If, on the other hand, you're prepared to pull your credit card out <laughs> and you invest in gold ammo. Premium ammunition for this thing is high explosive squash head. And it you lose a bit of penetration, right? It suddenly only does 275 millimeters of penetration. I'm sure you'll somehow manage to cope. But it does 1750 average damage. Holy shit. And as you can see, Novarore, in common with well, I have no official facts, figures, or statistics to back this claim up, but in common with a lot of 215B183 drivers, is using nothing 
but premium ammunition. And that right there, 1,591 damage. 1,600 damage on the front of an E100. And that was a low damage roll. That's why everybody uses Hesh with this gun. I say everybody, not everybody. Bosch 155, notoriously tough target to penetrate from the front. Nice flat surface though. Boom. <laughs> Hesh ammo is widely misunderstood. Um, there are four basic different kinds of ammunition in the game. Armour piercing, armour piercing composite rigid, high explosive, high explosive anti-tank, I just realised this is five, <laughs> and Hesh, high explosive squash head. Now, three of them have high explosive in the name. Um, one of the three is actually misleading. High explosive anti-tank ammunition doesn't really work like all the other high explosive ammo in the game. It's probably simpler and safer to think of high explosive anti-tank premium ammunition as armour piercing ammunition that has high penetration does not lose penetration with distance but doesn't work very well against sloped angled or spaced armor and and tends to bounce and do no damage uh, if it if it hits at an extreme angle other high explosive ammunition like high explosive and high explosive squash head works differently um, it's probably safe to think of high explosive squash head ammo which is what the 215B uses as high explosive ammo that has a lot of penetration because if you fire a high explosive shell at a target and it doesn't just ricochet but it doesn't have enough penetration to penetrate the armor it will explode on the armor and do some damage it won't do the full damage but it will do some Hesh works exactly the same way it will always explode as long as it doesn't auto bounce and to do some damage. However, in common with high explosive anti-tank, I apologise if this is getting very technical and boring by the way, in common with high explosive anti-tank, it doesn't like hitting spaced armour, and it doesn't like hitting sharp angles. Um, you, to get the maximum out of your Hesh ammo, you have to not hit spaced armour, and hit a nice flat surface of the enemy tank. And if you can do that, well, you're going to one-shot kill him, basically. And don't forget, it's not just, you know, the, the high explosive part of the whole high explosive squash head is also important. Even if you don't kill what you shoot at, you've just been hit with high explosives. So, dead crewmen, wrecked modules, you know, damaged ammo racks, engines on fire, all that good stuff. Often, getting hit by a high explosive squash head shell, you're going to wish you were dead, even if it doesn't one-shot kill you. And it's probably going to one-shot kill you. 1,750 average damage? Holy crap, man. And it looks like our E100s here are getting a bit bored, and they're uh, spoiling for a fight with that Jagdpanzer E100 and T110 E4. And, you know, with the, this thing, 25 seconds to reload this shot. It does promote a very campy, bush camping kind of gameplay. Nothing you can do about it, you know, if your gun takes that long to reload, you've, you, you've got to hide between shots. No sense in sitting there letting the opponents take shots at you while you're defenceless. But it does promote a certain style of gameplay with this thing. One other thing that I always find hilarious about, you know, when you get into an argument about high explosive squash head ammo, is that people always throw up the whole, oh, but it's totally balanced because if you fire it into spaced armour, it won't penetrate and it'll only explode and do a little bit of damage, you won't get the full damage. Um, yeah, and that's bad because <laughs> if I fire anything else in the space armor, it's just not going to do any damage. You know, it's how is only do it? Look at that bang straight into the engine. That was a well aimed shot, to be fair. Straight into the engine of the T110E4, almost killed him, set him on fire, finished him off anyway. You'll see a perfect example of, by the way, talking about. Hesh ammo against spaced armor. You'll see a perfect example of what I'm talking about later on when Novaraw takes a shot at a batch hat. Because how many times have you had armor piercing or, or APCR or high explosive anti tank ammo loaded and you've fired out the side of a fast moving tank and bam, 
You take its tracks off and do no damage whatsoever. That's it. The tracks eat all of the damage. And it pisses you off, yeah? You fire Hesh at somebody, blow their tracks off. Yes, the tracks are going to act as spaced armour. The Hesh is going to detonate on the tracks rather than on the armour of the tank. But this stuff's got a 4 metre splash radius. It's like firing an artillery shell at somebody. Even if this thing misses the target, as long as you land the shot within 4 metres of him, you're going to do some damage from, effectively, high explosive splash. So if you fire this gun with this Hesh ammo into the side of a tank and his tracks intercept the shot, yeah, the shell will explode on the tracks. <laughs> Watch this T-110E5. 1,525 health. Bang. No health. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Oh. So, yes. Yeah, sure, the, she the shell will explode on the tracks, but it will explode on the tracks. It won't just wreck the tracks and do nothing. Here we go. Watch this. Batch at 25T. We're spotted. We're reloading. We fire... The Batchat's tracks take the damage, but the explosion still does 742 damage to him. How is that worse? And this is the argument everybody always puts up. Yes, but tracks act as spaced armor and Hesh just gets absorbed by the tracks and it won't. It'll only do 700 or 800 damage. Well, it's better than doing no damage, which is what you would have done if you'd fired anything else at him and hit in the same spot. How is that worse? I just don't understand the argument. And, and note, 742 damage. That's the same amount of damage that you can get from any of the other tier 10 tank destroyers. He, he did 742 damage to that bat chat by not penetrating his armour. <laughs> the other tier 10 tank destroyers do that by penetrating your armour. How the hell is that a bad thing? I just don't understand. But there you go. It is what it is. Now, he only has seven shots left. Well, that's all right, because there are only six tanks left on the enemy team, so we've got this one in the bag. Look at this. Jagdpanzer E100. Front of a Jagdpanzer E100. Well, to be fair, he does turn around and give him the side of his turret. <laughs> as close as damn it to 2,000 damage in one shot. This thing's totally balanced. Well, you know, it, it, it is, it, it's, the machine itself isn't unbalanced at all. It's just that ridiculous gold ammo that the stuff fires, which is just absurd. It does have monster penetration with standard armor-piercing ammo. It does do monster damage with standard armor-piercing ammo. 310 millimeters of penetration, 1150 average damage. And yet, nobody uses it, <laughs> because the Hesh is so ridiculous. But don't forget, you, the side armour on this thing is utter rubbish. The frontal armour isn't that good. And at the best, you're only going to get one shot every 25 seconds. So this thing certainly isn't invulnerable. You know, you need other tanks up front spotting targets for you. While you can sit in cover and just roll out, take your shot, and roll back. It kind of reminds me of... I used to play a lot of Warhammer Fantasy Battle um, from Games Workshop when I was a child. I say when I was a child, when I was about 16. And um, way back then, we're talking the mid-80s, one of the factions in Warhammer Fantasy Battle was called Chaos. And they were considered to be a little bit overpowered. And one of my friends had a, a, an army of Chaos Warriors. Well, he didn't have an army of Chaos Warriors. He had an, a Chaos Army with a Chaos Warrior. And the standing joke was that this Chaos Warrior was just so ridiculously overpowered that he would literally just sit in a tent at the back of the battlefield. And any time anything was going wrong for the Chaos Army, they just, he'd just stick his face out of the tent and go, Bleh, and my entire army would run away in terror. <laughs> That's what this thing is. Look at that. That bat chat was on eight kills. He's earned a Radley Walters medal. They've still got an AMX 1390, a Lerva, a Geschutzwagen E100. 
<laughs> Nova Roar is alone here. The Batchat just threw the game away because he was greedy for the last kill. Why did he not just wait for this AMX 1390 to arrive? All he had to do was hold on another 15 seconds. And Nova Roar couldn't get around the corner. There's a wrecked E100 blocking the road. Got greedy for the kill. Nova Roar's missed the 1390. This guy would have been sitting on his ass. He only has 800 health left. 1390 can kill him. Well, most 1390s would be able to kill him. This guy, I'm not quite so sure. How could you even... How, how can this... You've got him now, unless you reverse. And so he reverses. <laughs> how is that even possible? How can you fail so hard? He just fired. You had 25 seconds to just take your time and kill him with your 90mm gun. He only had 800 health left. <laughs> How can you fail that hard? I just... I don't get it. You know, it just does not make any sense to me. Speaking of hard failure... Well... <laughs> he's only... It's only a, it's only a lover. <laughs> And, and this is why, time after time after time, I always say, when you're driving out of the cap circle at the start of the game, drive over the crates and the tent in the middle of your cap circle, because the only purpose they serve is for enemy tanks to hide behind when they're capping. And if you don't destroy them at the start of the game, you end up having to do stuff like this. There's a Lerva. 1,320 health. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Well, we still have two shots remaining. Sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle for uh, Death Star drivers because there are 15 tanks on the enemy team and they only get 12 rounds of ammo. <sighs> so it's, um, yeah. <laughs> Novarore, he's going for his Radley Walters. There's only 50 seconds of the game left. There's a GWE 100, a Geschutzwagen E100, with two kills on the enemy team. You're never going to cap. You need to find him and kill him to win. Now. Hmm. Let's think about this. The only player left on the enemy team is artillery. Just look for the nearest stretch of open water. <laughs> just just look for the nearest, nearest bit of deep water. You'll find the artillery. Guarantee it. You think I'm joking? I don't know, is the water on this map big enough to drown yourself in? He's going to have a go. <laughs> there you go, Radley Walters. 12,361 damage done. So, yes. FV215B183. Just driving its enemies before them. <laughs> Hearing the lamentation of their women. You know, just, wow. Look at that. That bat chat, that bat chat just got greedy. Um, obviously, he could see where the AMX 1390 was, and he was trying to, he was trying to catch the tiger by the tail. He, Novarol could not get around the road to take shots at this guy. There was a dead E100 blocking the road. The bat chat was in cover. All he had to do was sit there and wait for the AMX 1390 to turn up. But no, he wanted to be the one to get the kill. And so he just tempted fate. And overall planted one right in his face. Uh, and he deserved to die. He just threw it away. Out of greed to be the one to get the kill. The 1390. Just... What, that entire game. That one shot that he managed to get in an overall it was the only penetrating shot that he did in the entire match. Well, it was the only, fight, shot, only shot he fired in the entire match that actually did any damage. He had 25 seconds of uninterrupted shooting time at an overall's machine between his reloads, and he failed to kill him. <laughs> absurd. Just, can I have enemies like that every time I play? That, that would be really cool. Thank you. Yeah, he only missed one shot. <laughs> Ten shots fired, eight kills. That machine is ridiculous. Well, the machine isn't ridiculous. The ammo that it fires is. 
So, Novarar, um, congratulations, third place. Five and a half thousand gold for you. I suspect you're going to need it <laughs> just to resupply the ammunition <laughs> on your FV215B183. Well done. So, second place. This is Taika Rapina, who I've probably mispronounced. It's Finnish for Magic Monkey, apparently. <laughs> He's in his Object 268, Soviet Tier 10 tank destroyer. Now, I have to apologise in advance. Um, I have to keep it to third-person external camera all the way through this replay, because for some reason, whenever this replay switches to sniper view, first person, it, can just, it just breaks the replay. I don't know what's going on with it. There's just something wrong with the replay file. So bear that in mind when you're watching events. Now, Tiger here in his Object 268. We're here on Severogorsk. And in the finest traditions of Tank Destroyer Enus, he's going to camp like a bitch <laughs> all the way through the first half of this game. <laughs> um... So, yes, anyway. Object, you know, I remember prior to the Tier 10 tank destroyers being introduced into the game in patch 7.5. Because there used to be um, tank destroyers and medium tanks only went as high as Tier 9. The only Tier 10s that you got were the heavy tanks. And um, that meant that the Object 704 was the, the big boy among the Soviet tank destroyers. And the Jagdtiger was the big boy in the German tank destroyers. And I remember the crying on the forums was always the same. It was, oh, the Jagdtiger is, uh, oh, it doesn't have the alpha damage of the Object 704. Russian bias, Russian bias. DPM means nothing. You know, if you have to remain exposed to keep your rate of fire going, then the, the Jagdtiger is at a clear disadvantage over the Object 704. Alpha damage is king. Oh, Russian bias, Russian bias. And so on, and so on, and so on. Well, then patch 7.5 rolled up and the Germans got the Jagdpanzer E100 with a 170mm gun. Biggest alpha damage in the game. And the Russians got this, the Object 268, with good alpha damage, very, very good accuracy, fast reload. And the crying on the forums. <laughs> you guessed it. Oh, no, alpha damage means nothing in world attacks anymore. No, it's all about sustained DPM. Oh, look at the Object 268. Oh, Russian bias, Russian bias. <laughs> and you can just imagine the wargaming developers in Minsk, and you'll have to imagine it because they don't give a shit what anybody thinks in the EU community. Wargaming Paris care what people think in the EU community. Wargaming Minsk couldn't give a rat's ass. So imagine, if you will, Wargaming Minsk. Ah, oh, we can't win. Doesn't matter what we do. We're being accused of Russian bias. Oh, anyway. But back to the game. I don't know if you're aware of... Oh, there we go. First hit done. He's fired a shot already, but it missed. There's a good 743... Which, by the way, is a below-average damage roll for this gun. But look, look at what's going on ahead there. The enemy are pushing hard, but there's a good group... And there's another 773 below-average damage roll. Enemy are pushing hard around here. RT-62A, just Amarak, their T-54. There's a good bunch of tanks here fighting off the enemy team. Hard attack there from the enemy. A lot of strong tanks came over that hill. Plenty of support here waiting to beat them back. The exact opposite has happened over on the other side of the map. The only thing we have left alive over there is an IS-7, who seems to be heading the wrong way and a T-54E1 on 900 health. Everything else over there has died. Amex 50B, M103, E50, you name it. So, it, you know, it's still pretty even so far. Tyker's searching for targets here. You can see that IS-7 heading into the teeth of a Jagdpanzer E100 and a Conqueror, and he's, he's trying to... He's trying to support him. He's looking for what targets he can shoot at. There's that AMX 5120 who tried to attack... On the left flank, he's just been nailed. He's looking for the Jagdpanzer E100. He realises that's a valuable target. He sees the Lorraine. This shot right here. Direct hit. Straight in the side of a Lorraine of all tanks. Does no damage. Only blows his tracks off. Unbelievable. Well, you know, it happens all the time. If he'd 
taken that shot in an FV215183, that would have killed him, <laughs> as well as blowing his tracks off firing Hesh ammo. You know, just saying. Apparently that's a disadvantage of firing Hesh ammo, because it only does an extra 800 damage as well as blowing the tracks off. You know, I don't know. Good shot on the Conqueror. That's the first time he's fired a shot that's actually done more than the average damage roll. Unfortunately, they're shedding tanks at a rate of knots here. They've just lost the T-62-8. There goes the IS-7. Conqueror finished him off. Takes another shot at the Conqueror. That one missed. 2,386 damage done. They only have four tanks left. They've just lost Ally IS-7 crashed. Did he suicide? Looks like he dived off the edge of a cliff. Anyway, and judging by the laugh in chat, yeah, it sounds like he did. Well, that was a good hit on the Jagdpanzer E100. 805 damage. Again, below average damage roll, but damage is damage. Below average on one of these guns is still a metric butt-ton of damage. Oh, the IS-7 just amaracked the Object 704. He's having some bad luck with his gun. That hit the Conqueror and bounced. Now, he hasn't actually... There's only two of them left now. The Jagdpanzer E-100 and himself. The Jagdpanzer E-100 is hit. And they all know where the Jagdpanzer E-100 is. Taika hasn't actually been spotted yet. Now, remember, there's lots of enemy tanks come swarming over there earlier. Good solid hit, below average damage roll of course, on the E75, and he still hasn't had his position given away. Lots and lots of effective cover here. See, he's not the one actually doing the spotting. All this line of sight work is being done. Ah, there comes a T-54E1. That's bad news. But, but nobody knows he's on top of this hill. He hasn't been spotted the entire game. All of this spotting is being done by the Jagdpanzer E100. Took a blind shot there at the E75. Don't know if it hit or not. Keeping an eye open on this T54E1. Very dangerous tier 9 medium tank with an American autoloader gun. Jagdpanzer E100 still in one piece. Still in one piece. That's like a piece and a place, though both at the same time. Come on, where are you? There's the E75. Does he have a shot? He's going to have to back up to get the gun depression. Does he have the shot? Yes, he does. Good damage roll. It would needed to have been a very good damage roll to finish the E75 off. Where is that T54? There's the IS-7. Still has a lot of health. But two tier 10 tank destroyers can reduce that much health to nothing with one hit each. Now there's an IS-4 turning up. Oh, this is not good. Gets a hit on the IS-4. Another good damage roll, 895. He's racking the damage up now. He's up to 5,751. There's the T-54E1. The Jagdpanzer E100 is in serious trouble. IS-4. And now there's a Conqueror getting stuck in as well. It looks like the E100 is facing his gun towards the T-54E1, but that just allows the IS-7 to get around him. He's trying to plant another shot on the IS-4. Good kill. Now there are only six of them left. The Jagdpanzer E100 is down to 153 health. With an IS-7 trying to get around, there's just no way this guy's going to live. He's got tanks on three sides of him. No matter which way he turns, he's going to provide this side to one of them. He kills the Conqueror, goes down fighting. Another good hit on the IS-7. We've finally been spotted for the first time in the game. IS-7's 163 metres away. Let me just... Let me just... Make, remember that number, okay? 163 metres. Now he's 145 metres away. He reloads. We've just lost the Jagdpanzer. We're alone against five enemy tanks. There we go. 145 metres away. Remember that number. And keep an eye on chat. But we have other problems. T-54E1 and an E-7. Now, the IS-7 is complaining about broken camo. 50 metres away, he fired and I couldn't see him. Uh, actually, he was three times that distance away, but, you know, who's counting? Kills the E-75. 
takes a hit from the T-54E1, uses a repair kit to get his tracks back up, T-54 blows his tracks off again. IS-7 is crying about broken spotting mechanics, can't tell the difference between 50 metres and 150 metres. Never mind. Repairs his tracks again, goes chasing down this T-54E1. One good hit. It's going to take... It's going to take probably another two good hits, and oh shit, Jagdpanzer E100. Come on, he's waiting for the reload. He's taking an awful chance here. It is going to take two shots, but he can't hang around in front of a Jagdpanzer E100. T54 E1's reloaded. Oh, that was a big hit. Watch this, just watch this. This is just masterful. He's reloaded, fires on the move, kills the T-54E1, doesn't stop. And he's playing chasey chasey, catchy catchy, kissy kissy <laughs> with the Jagdpanzer E100. The Jagdpanzer E100 is never going to win this game. No, 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 no. And time for some surprise butt sex. Although there's nothing surprising about this. <laughs> Promise you'll at least call him afterwards. <laughs> 10,936 damage done. But there's still a T110E5 in play. And he's not AFK, because he's got a kill. So, where the hell is he while all that was going on? Has he disconnected? Has he gone AFK? Let's speed things up and find out. Look at the carnage up here. Dead Lorraine. Dead Awful Panzer. Dead AMX. That's just dead tanks everywhere. Oh, he's been spotted. There's the T110E5. And he is AFK and hit and on fire and dead. That was a lot of damage done. Let's go and see exactly what his results were. Well, there's his results. That's a Top Gun and a Kolobanoffs medal with 12,799 damage done. And the enemy team were just better. Across the board, with the exception of the top two damage dealing tanks on each team, across the board, if you look at Tyker's team, pick any tank, have a look at the opposing number on the other side, the guy on the losing team did more damage. But, but you know, <laughs> 12,799 damage from Tyker's Object 268. There's the difference right there. And just think about that number for a minute. 12,799. That's just absurd. The, the most damage I ever did in a game, I think, was just over 7,000. And I was absurdly pleased with that, as I should be. You know, it's a lot of damage to do in a game. That's like... That's just over half of the damage that these guys are doing. These are some absolutely amazing games. And all the way through the process of doing this replay contest, it was, you people were sending in games with so much damage done that I was looking at games where, oh, here's an FV215B183 game. Oh, he's only done 10,000 damage. Next. <laughs> Can you imagine being in that position where you're looking at games where people are doing 10,000 damage in a game and you're just thinking, not good enough. Next. <laughs> That's what it's been like running this contest, which of course means that now it's time to show you the winner. So, Tyker. Five and a half thousand gold. I know for a long time, because I've been following the comments of these games on whatreplays.com, for a long time in the comments of this game, you thought that you weren't going to win anything because of the next game that we're going to show everybody. You have, in fact, won second place. So five and a half thousand gold for you. Congratulations. Well played. Enjoy your gold. But the winner, who's it going to be? What do you think? Jagdpanzer E100, FB215, B183 again, maybe? I think you might be surprised. Maybe not too surprised, but maybe a little surprised. Nope, 
It's a T110E4, driven by Voiceek, and I honestly did not think I was going to see such a good game from one of these things, because hardly anybody drives them anymore. You very rarely see T110E4s, and I think that's probably because, well, when patch 7.5 first came out and we first saw the Tier 10 tank destroyers, you didn't see a lot of them. Well, you saw a lot of T110E4s, um, even though I didn't really like them very much because the gun depression on these things is garbage, and you know I like my gun depression. But there were plenty of people out there entirely capable of proving me wrong by doing exceptionally well in these things. Oh, and doing things like that. <laughs> you gotta love those German engine fires. Um, but and enough people were doing well enough in these things for wargaming to beat them to death with the most savage kicking from the nerf hammer that I think oh, well that I've seen in a long time and I didn't really think these things needed nerfing that much. They arguably have the worst tier 10 tank destroyer gun. Now you take that with a pinch of salt because it's still a good gun, but it's not as good as the same gun. On the T110E3, it, it, has, it suffers the penalty because this thing has a turret, in that it has a slower reload, it has a slower aiming time, it isn't as accurate, it has the same penetration and damage, but all the other stats aren't as good as the same gun on the T110E3. And, you know, it, it was just, it didn't need the nerfing that it got. The armor on this thing is not very good at all, and that is a bad place to be sitting in an IS3 in a tier 10 game on this map. And that's a very, very brave IS-7. Yeah. Let's just, let's just say it's brave and we'll leave it at that. What does he think? Well, I don't know. You know, sometimes you pull a move like that in a tank and it ends up, you end up having a monster game. Because nobody expects you to go there and you profit from it immensely. Or, you drive all the way up there and get slaughtered by the Jagdpanzer E100 and ISU-152, who are just waiting to shoot at you. One of the two. So yeah, T110E4. It, it, you, you know, you rarely see these things being driven anymore. Because they got battered so hard with the Nerf bat. That 4502A looks like you can probably use some help. E50M coming around the switchback road at the back here. And, well, yeah. All the rain finished off the pattern, and this E50M down here finished off what remained of the IS-7, who, yeah, that didn't quite work out for you. Speaking of E50Ms, good damage roll, 911. And he's, unsurprisingly, he's now been spotted. He takes a hit there. But it doesn't penetrate. And then almost immediately afterward, see that? That would suggest that something small and weedy, if you like, was taking pot shots at him. Maybe the awful, there it is, that's what was firing at him. And taking flanking shots at the 4502A as well. <laughs> Until we hammer rack him. <laughs> But the 4502A is about to get headshotted by the E50M. <sighs> scores are kind of even at the moment. Um, scores are 6-5. The E50M's coming up the back road. But we've got company waiting for him. Unfortunately, right over on the other side of the map, around here, things are about to take a turn for the worse. This is a patch 8.6 replay, by the way, and I seem to be having issues with my patch 8.6 replays. I have to keep them in external views because well, I'll show you what happens. There, do you see that? When I uh, when I when I move away from free camera, you'll you'll see what happens when he takes a shot at this E50M. And it, it just for some reason, sniper view. Look at that. It's just not working. That's bad. So. So instead, I'm going to have to use external view. And the, the, 
there's only an E50M around here. There are far too many tanks coming around here to deal with them when they need to be up on that side of the map where we're losing heavy tanks at a rate of knots. However, it's going to take a... Oh! That looked like premium fire extinguisher to me. One tick and then out. And he's probably regretting that now. <laughs> because the lurver's going to ram him. Sometimes those premium fire extinguishers can be a fantastic investment. And then sometimes not. Because I think... <laughs> that's 20,000 credits that just cost him. In order to get rammed by a lurver. So he's probably not very happy. Oh, that IS-3 survived. Anyway... They've just totally lost it over on the other side of the map there. There we go. Tiger 2, IS-3, doing nothing on the wrong side of the valley. Watching everybody else die on the other side. They've now been finished off. There's a T-110 E-4, an E-100, uh, an E-50, and something else coming this way. Voice seeks like, right, screw this. I'm loading the premium ammo. I'm going to go over there and kill them all. That's basically what he's saying in chat. He's saying, Pershing, get back. You're not doing anybody any good dying there. And here comes the E-50. And that was a good shot. Come on, Pershing, get out of there. The E-50, you'd think, would have thought, well, he's fired, I may as well take my shot and kill the Pershing, but instead he backs off. And gives him time to reload, so he comes out and shoots him again. <laughs> Yeah, and, and why not? But, you know, there are all six of them and there are only three of us left. And there's some big angry tanks coming around that corner, including an E100, who's as good as on full health. And another T110 E4. Now, E100 drivers like to carry heat ammo because the gun on the E100 is pretty garbage. Penetration with AP is substandard. Heat ammo, there's lots of flat surfaces on the front of a T110 E4 and the armour isn't that good in the first place. Heat ammo can really mess you up, especially 150mm heat, which the E100 is likely to be firing. WZ111 is coming around. Three versus four. E100's firing at the WZ. Seems to have missed. Where's the T110E? Oh, the T110E4's e dead. Of course we killed him. <laughs> what am I talking about? Completely missed it in all the action. So it's 2v1 here. But this E100... Oh, one right through his lower plate. And we get away before he reloads. This E100 is sitting there for a reason. He's not stupid. He's played a good game. And you can see Voiceek is asking, he's, he's not stupid either, he knows why the E100 is sitting there. He wants to know where the Jagdpanzer E100 is. The Jagdpanzer E100 gets another good hit into the E100, but the Jag, the, this guy has moved back here. Oh, that was nasty. He's moved back here so he can get supporting fire from the Jagdpanzer E100 and the ISU-152. And there's a very, very near miss. This is why the E100 is backing up down here, and whoa, there's a Lerva. Well, we kill the E100, but the Lerva's gone AFK for some reason. Voicey can see what's coming. He knows that, that something just fired and missed them. Don't do it, WZ. Don't do it. There it is. Voicey does the right thing. There's the Jagdpanzer E100. The WZ's still just sitting there. Now you're in a safe spot. Now you can turn around and kill the Lerva. Don't just sit on the ridge in front of a Jagdpanzer E100. Now he's alone. He knows where the Jagdpanzer E100 is. He has a fairly good idea where the ISU is going to be as well. Now you'll note he has sixth sense. Every time he pops around the left side of that rock, he doesn't get spotted 
until he fires, because the bushes are providing concealment. Every time he pops around the right hand side of the rock. Now that was a hit from the ISU 152. Gets his tracks back up. Come on. Come on. Guy's only on 90 health. He's loaded high explosive. Absolutely the right thing to do. He's fired. Given his position away. Another hit from the ISU 152. He's been hit twice by an ISU 152. And he's not dead. What I suspect, well, I know the ISU 152 is firing high explosive at him. I don't think that's a fully upgraded, I, but there we go. I don't think it's a fully upgraded ISU. I don't think he has the BL-10 gun. I think he's using the 152mm howitzer, the stock gun, and is firing high explosive shells. Well, I know he's firing high explosive shells, but I suspect it's from the howitzer. And again, every time Voicey goes into concealment, on the right hand side of the rock, in the bushes, nobody fires at him. And his sixth sense doesn't go off until he fires his gun. Every time he goes out the... there we... Now he pulled back far enough there that the ISU could see him over the top of the bushes. And he gets hit again! <laughs> He's down to 322 health now. ISU's got his cloaking device engaged. Well, he's probably got a camo net, a fully camo trained crew, and binoculars. He's actually got a very, very good idea of where that ISU is. You see where he's aiming. You can see in that sort of saddle between the two mountain peaks, right there where there's a tree and a bush. If the ISU's there, he hasn't hit him yet. Every time he fires, you see an explosion and dirt get kicked up. That basically tells you that you haven't hit anything. If he was to fire and, and not see an explosion, that would indicate that he had actually hit a target, but you don't see the impact because you can't see the target. There's only 2 minutes and 20 seconds of this game left. He's down at 322 health. An ISU with 152mm howitzer lobbing high X shells at him. He could easily lose this. There we go again. That was another miss. He's convinced the guys in that bush. But he's peppered that bush with shots. He only has five rounds of ammo left. Two AP, one APCR, two high explosive. But this guy's got his cloaking device engaged. And he, he can't hang around. It's less than two minutes to go. Break cover. Gets himself tucked in behind this rock. He's been seen. There are only so many places that guy can be to still see him from that specific angle and be able to fire at him. Minute and 25 seconds to go. He's got to start taking chances if he wants to win. And there are only so many chances. Oh, there we go. Now, that didn't even hit him. That shot landed on the ground in front of him. But there was enough splash damage from the HE shell to blow his tracks off. He puts another shot into the bushes. He's convinced there's an ISU hiding under that tree. ISU fires, misses again. Now there's not an awful lot of cover here for him to make this run. But there's only 48 seconds of the game left. He doesn't want to lose. The ISU doesn't want to lose. If the ISU only had the BL-10 gun, this game would be lost already. He's spotted again, bang, direct hit. He's on full health, he hasn't hit him once, and he's in exactly the spot he thought he was. He gets a low damage roll. To be fair, he would have needed a high damage roll to one-shot kill this guy. There's only 25 seconds of the game left. He's got... <laughs> he's only got three shots of... Well, he's not gonna... He, there isn't enough time left in the game for him to reload more than two shots. Come on, come on. 12 seconds. 10 seconds. He's missed. Fires on the move. Kills him. 
with five seconds of the game remaining. And if anybody was wondering what 13,326 damage done looked like, look no further. That was awesome. Um, and you've got to feel sorry for the enemy team. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> again, it's another one of those games where, from the enemy team's perspective, you just had a better team. But there's one player on the enemy side who just will not accept that fact and refuses to go down. Look at that. The T124 on the enemy team, 4,200 damage. Their E100, 4,066 damage. E50M, 3,740. Yeah, Panzer E100, 3,500. Even the Lerva, <laughs> 2,276 damage in a tier 10 match. The ISU did absolutely everything he could. Look at that. 16 shots, 9 hits, 2,244 damage. Just stock ISU 152. <laughs> you know, MBH in the ISU 152, I hope... It's, it's going to be worth it, mate. Trust me. When you get that BL-10 gun, uh, the, the painful memory of that game will just be a, a dim afterthought. Just... Keep at it, it's going to be worth it. Um, but, you know, when you're coming up against somebody on the enemy team doing 13,000 damage, it's going to be an uphill struggle. <laughs> it's just, you know, good luck. <laughs> you, you, were, you were just fated to lose that game, I'm afraid, guys. Voice Seek doing 13,326 damage. You win first prize in the tier 9 and 10 category, which means you can mosey on over to the EU gift shop, pick what you want other than a year's premium because that's ridiculously expensive um, any of the tier 8 premium tanks, any of the gift packages uh, I'm more than happy to buy it for you and that boys and girls marks the end of the 100,000 subscriber celebration contest series, we've had the caption contest on YouTube, no we haven't we've had it on Facebook, get it right jingles yeah, we've had the caption contest on Facebook, we've had the t-shirt design contest, and we've had the four different categories of the World of Tanks replay contest. Um, it's cost me nearly a thousand pounds worth of prizes. It, that sounds a lot when I say it like that. <laughs> um, uh, you know, what the hell. Uh, I couldn't have done it if you guys hadn't subscribed to the channel. A hundred thousand of you when I started doing the contest. A hundred and twenty-four thousand now. It just you just keep subscribing and and it's because you guys have subscribed and because you keep watching the videos that I was able to actually do this which is great because because you guys have earned it basically um, if it if not for you I wouldn't be able to do this sort of thing I mean I'd still be putting the videos up regardless of how many people were subscribing because I enjoy doing it but I wouldn't have been able to do this contest if not for the support and appreciation that all you guys have shown for the work that I do on YouTube and I think that's just fantastic of you all and I'm very very happy to be able to give something back um, so there you go the replay contest over now I am going to be taking a break <laughs> you know you look through three and a half thousand replays well I didn't look through all of them I, I had assistance um, but it's still been bloody hard work as I'm sure you can appreciate but I hope you've enjoyed the fruits of well I was going to say my efforts but it's not it's your efforts as well I hope you've enjoyed the fruits of our labours I still have just, well, three and a half thousand of your replays. And there are some fantastic games in there that maybe didn't do a whole lot of damage, but were exceptionally well-played games as well. So if you haven't seen your replay featured on the channel, well, you're probably still not going to see your replay featured on the channel. As I said, there were three and a half thousand of you. I can't possibly show them all. Um, but there's still a chance that you might get your moment of glory. Depending on how well your game was played or how entertaining I found it, um, there's still plenty of opportunity to see more stuff from the contest featured on the channel. But that's it for the prize winners. So, hope you've enjoyed the contest. I've certainly enjoyed running it. Uh, prize winners, well done to all of you. Uh, for the t-shirt contest, the caption contest on Facebook, and the replay contest, well done to every single one of you. I hope you enjoy your prizes. You've earned every single one of them. The guys that uh, didn't win prizes, I hope you've at least enjoyed taking part and playing some great games of World of Tanks. 
and have enjoyed watching the winners here on YouTube. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield. I'll catch you next time.